Good afternoon, my name is Ross Cameron, I'm with Elkis Manfredi Architects and um, today we're going to take a, a first look at the new Emerson College Little Building Residence Hall. Um, the building was originally built in 1917, uh, Emerson purchased it in 1994 and, um, did, and there was a, a renovation that took place at that time. Uh, we've actually brought the building up to current codes, so let's go take a look inside, get out of the traffic. Do you want to be in the movie? No. Um, so this is the um, historic uh, arcade. This used to be a two-story shopping arcade when the building first opened in 1917. Uh, as part of the overall um, Emerson project, we, uh, we were able to come back and restore all of the historic and decorative paint finishes in here. Um, and we did that um, using a technology called chromochronology, um, also known as um, cross-sectional microscopy, where they take little bits of paint chips and we look at it under a very high intensity mic microscope and we can actually see all the different layers of paint that historically were applied to this architecture over the hundred plus years that the arcade was in function so um, we know that all of this finish work that you see all the different colors in here are true to the original 1917 design which is really exciting for us because um, the only photographs we had from the opening uh, opening year are obviously all black and white being circa 1917 so this is the first time we're really seeing the original paint colors. Um, one of the other things that we're uh, as part of the project is we're creating new retail spaces at grade. Um, this was something President Lee Pelton had really pushed for and I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. We're going to put fantastic retail tenants in here that's going to bring a lot of life and activity to this street. Um, previously if you remember there was some Emerson um, offices, Campus Life, I think ECPD was in here, uh, you had the Equipment Distribution Centre and all of those functions are necessary on campus but it's a much much better use um, of these retail tenant spaces um, to have lively uh, activity on the street so it's really going to change the way that this whole corner on uh, Boylston and Tremont looks. So let's go up to level 13 um, Maybe we can pitch a ride here. Oh, can we get that? Um, one thing about the elevators, all the elevators are new. There used to be eight cabs originally. Um, they were very small, they were slow, they didn't really meet code. Um, so we've now replaced them with five brand new cabs. Um, they are much larger, much faster, um, and they, they should be able to handle the, uh, the load of 1,035 students in this building. Um, what's interesting about level 13, it never existed in the original design. This was a kind of unusual characteristic of the, of the existing little building. Um, on the roof there was a parapet that was almost 14 feet tall that ran all the way around. So when Emerson challenged us to try and increase the um, to increase the student capacity, the bed count, this was an opportunity to add an entirely new floor, and it's mostly suites up here, um, an entirely new floor, floor of student uh, residences. So let's go take a look at a couple of the really interesting rooms. <coughs> Obviously we're still finishing with some painting, some construction, but we're getting there. So this is actually a suite. Um, and then this is one of our, I think our design team's kind of favorite rooms is this one on the corner. So we're right in the corner of Boylston and Tremont Street. Um, and again, what we did here is, you see this is kind of unusual in a sense, but we tried to balance um, the, the, this notion of creating an additional floor up here where none existed before. 
um, without really interrupting or, or changing the architectural characteristics. So with this kind of, it's modern Gothic is the style of this building. There were plain ashlar sections of stone um, between these kind of highly ornate and decorative finial pieces. So we saw an opportunity to kind of just pop those out, recess some windows behind. The building essentially still looks like it did in 1917, but we've now got an additional floor of um, student residences up here. And it's actually quite interesting, I think, um, seeing into the back of these things. So um, what we'll do now is I think we'll pop down to 12. Um, so if you want to follow me, we'll go take a look at some of the um, community spaces. So again, upgrading all of the life safety systems was um, key to Emerson. There used to be these small kind of wee winder stairs um, that students would use as they were kind of moving up and down through the building. And those were also for egress. Um, so we've got two new, brand new, code compliant, pressurized uh, egress stairs to make sure the building is up to current codes. Let's take a look in this room. So. So this is what we've kind of referred to as like our standard little building room. Um, there, there are more of these, I think, than any other. Um, and obviously a, a fantastic view of um, Boston Common and the State House. And this is a double room. So it's got the standard complement of Emerson, Emerson furniture, bed, the captain's chest, desk, chair, and a wardrobe. Um, and again, this is really quite a large room for a double, but um, you know, it was dictated essentially by having to marry the room planning in with the um, existing architecture of the facade. Um, so I think it's going to be a fantastic room for uh, two lucky students. Um, I wanted to go look at one other smaller room, a single in what we call the keyholes. <coughs> I think this one, yep. So this one you'll see, um, you can see all of the existing 1917 architecture. And then the insert that we made was this highly contemporized glass cubes that are the community spaces. And we'll talk a little bit about those when we get there. But again, this is a fantastic room, nice and sunny. This is a single. Um, and there's a, a combination of singles, doubles. We have some triples, and then we have suites within the building too. So let's go take a look at the um, common spaces which are, did I just get lost? This way, sorry. <laughs> okay. So we, we spoke a little bit about how we managed to boost the bed count by reclaiming that 13th floor up behind the existing parapet. One other way in which we did it was to um, take all of the common rooms that used to be on the west side of the building they were fairly miserable spaces. Um, they were single height, they had acoustic ceiling tiles, kind of prison grade furniture, and they were not nice places to hang out in. So what we did was we took all of those um, and we consolidated them into basically these double height um, glass cubes that we infilled between the, the fingers of the, the building. And we have three different flavors of community space. Um, we have the club room, which is this one. We have the cafe, and then we also have um, the study room. And these are just generic names um, right now. I mean, I think they're going to be fantastic naming opportunities. Um, but the, we, we figured that gives um, students three different types of activity that can take place. We wanted to do these as a double height space with a mezzanine, and that's primarily because Everything we're doing in, in the design is, is trying to foster, you know, community interaction between the students. Um, so the double height mezzanine means that you're socializing now with not the 98 people that are on your floor, but also the 98 people that are on the floor above you. So this kind of vertical connectivity, um, we, we think actually fosters more um, 
community and, and student um, interactivity. There's going to be a lot of soft seating up here. So again, we're trying to create these little alcoves and nooks um, where students can just sit with headphones on, laptops. They can be working together. Um, I mean, that's the fun thing about working for Emerson College is that you know, we design these spaces and then you know, the students will actually kind of invent how they use them, which is really is, it's exciting. So let's continue down here. <clears throat> so again, this is another double height space. This is the cafe. We're going to go down and take a look at that. I think somebody's working here, but if we're careful, we can sneak by. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. So this is our, our kind of permanent um, cafe seating area. Um, I think we can accommodate around about 15 to 20 people in this space for a communal meal. We've got a cooktop, microwaves, fridge. Um, and again, you know, the fantastic light coming in. Um, what you're not seeing in the at nighttime, um, we have these LED strip lights that are color matched to match the walls. So um, if you get the opportunity, walk past the little building in the evening and you're going to see these kind of glowing glass cubes uh, inserted between um, the fingers of the historic architecture. Um, let's go and look in the last common room through here. So this is called the study room. There's nothing really architecturally that's different about this space um, than the clubhouse. It's really just the way that I think residents' life are going to um, program it. Um, but also the furniture selections that we made in here um, are much more in tune akin to um, you know, quiet study space. So I just want to wrap up a little bit today um, just to kind of give you an overview of what we actually did here um, in the Emerson Little Building project. Um, we had to replace all the facade material. Um, it had uh, degraded and abraded over years, and there had been water infiltration behind the facade that had actually caused some of the steel structure to, um, to rust and to jack, and it was pushing all the stones out. So we knew we had some serious um, undertakings um, that, we were, that this project was going to involve. And we adopted a strategy where we took this kind of belt course at the cornice line and everything above that was going to be replaced. Everything below it was going to be restored in place. Both of them had to match. And we used um, a kind of relatively new technique, revolutionary I think for the time, um, to recreate this facade. We, we um, commissioned a digital scan that was a to an accuracy of a 32nd of an inch, which when we did this in 2008, that type of technology was confined to um, aerospace industry. And in fact, there was only two scanners in all of North America that could do what we wanted to do. So we scanned the entire building, and then our design team and our architects went in and we remodeled everything digitally from that scan data. So we had a replica of the building um, in a three-dimensional model. The downside of the scan being that accurate was that it picked up all of the blemishes and the cracked stone and the caulking and the metal strapping and all the reme remedial stuff that had been done to the building. So we had to go in and correct all of that digitally. Um, then we worked with our own 3D fab team in-house and also collaborated with Autodesk and with um, Beton, um, the concrete manufacturers out of uh, Canada. And we kind of figured out a way that we could have our three-dimensional model communicate directly with their, they have some machinery called a five-axial CNC router. And those they would use to make all of the positives that would then make the forms and the molds um, that we would pour this ultra-high performance concrete material into to get all of that intricate detail. Um, there's over 1,500 different panels, so there was a lot of three-dimensional um, modeling done on our part. Um, a lot of testing, we did three-dimensional printing of some of the details to make sure that uh, what we were modeling was actually what we wanted to see in the built form. Um, one last thing I want to say about this building, which I think is um, Emerson should be commended for, 
we were at a position um, probably back in 2010, 2011, where the building was in such bad shape that, you know, some other owners may have elected to try and pursue a complete demolition of the building. Um, Emerson chose not to do that. The little building is much loved um, by the city of Boston and by the college. Um, we often refer to it as Emerson's cornerstone of their campus. So they, you know, committed to and said, no, we're going to save this building, which I think plays into like a lot of the sustainability goals that we had for the project. Um, it's naturally ventilated, so we wanted students to be able to open windows and get fresh air to come in. Um, we're also doing a couple of other neat things. We're, har we're doing a, a, what's called a rainwater harvesting system, so all the rainwater that falls on the roof of the building, we capture it in tanks in the basement and then we filter it all and we use that to, um, to flush toilets. So that's contributing to our kind of sustainability goals for the, the project. Um, right now we're on track to get to achieve um, lead gold. Um, but I think the biggest thing and the boldest move that Emerson made was to, I guess, understanding that um, reusing old buildings, we talk a lot about embodied carbon emissions, which is basically CO2 emissions that are related to the manufacture, transportation, and erection of construction materials. And by reusing an old building, you know, we strip this all the way back to just the structure. Facade was new, we just have columns and slabs, everything else is new, all the systems, life safety, uh, mechanical systems, electrical systems, everything is new. But we're using an old building um, as a platform to, to, to build this new construction. And that actually saves between 50 and 75 percent versus tearing it down and, uh, and rebuilding new construction. So I think the college has been very clever in the sense that they have got what is essentially a brand new building, a new residence hall for 75 to 100 years um, without the environmental impacts of uh, new construction from ground up. So that's our quick look, first look. Um, through the Emerson College Little Building. I, I hope the students enjoy it as much as we did designing it. Thank you very much.